welcome to the Bangalore Toastmasters Club. I'm your sergeant at arms, Talan Menon. And sometimes in life, we don't pay attention to many things. There are some things that I lose track of. You know, like, you know, we look too much into mobile phones and we don't see where, where we are looking at. This is why I request all of you to please put your phones on silent mode or switch them off to not disturb the speakers. And for those who come on stage, please uh, refrain from talking about sex, politics or religion because you, know, you may hurt the sentiments of those around you. <laughs> Finally, if ever you want to leave the meeting hall, kindly do so whenever you hear an applause on stage. And that, my friends, is how you get a fulfilling meeting. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to drink this. But just like a magician doesn't re re reveal their tricks, the person I'm about to introduce to you today hasn't revealed how she's able to do so many things in a day. She, she's a, she's a area director in three different clubs. She, she's a head of three different Toastmaster clubs. Not just that, she's the president of this club and she has the time to work at Nokia as an um, as a engineer. All this was thanks to her five years of experience that she gained in Nokia. Please allow me to welcome the very beloved, our president, Toastmaster Priyanka Ranore. Just to 
days back, I heard about Postmaster and Chetra who introduced to me. So I just went first for the Welcome. Yes. Hi, everyone. I am Chetra Kamran. Uh, I am from Postmaster. And I am here to Postmaster. I am from Nashville. I work at your platform. Dear guest, if you would like to know anything about Toastmasters or how to join Bangalore Toastmasters, I would request you all to please connect with our executive committee. I request the executive committee members to please stand. You can reach out to any one of them regarding Toastmasters and how to join Bangalore Toastmasters Club. Fellow Toastmasters, together let us all welcome our guest with a thunderous applause. Your past can be positive 
negative. It can have stories of success or failure. It can have happiness or sadness. But how do you want to see your past? It is left to an intuition. Do you want to learn from it? Do you want to forget it? It's an intuition perspective. It is none of us who can tell that past is this or that. Or past is something that you learn or failure is something that you learn. It is an intuition perspective how you want to see what happened yesterday or what happened a couple of weeks, days or years. With that same thing that I would also like to share another perspective. If I'm sure all of you are very familiar with Jeff Bezos. He has a very different, different perspective when it comes to how do you see experience of us. He deals every day as a new day. According to him, you have to see every day as a new day and restart. Don't dwell into the past. And that is what motivates an individual. And let me, I'm very happy to introduce to you all someone who thinks exactly like Jeff Bezos, who thinks that past is nothing to be dwelled upon. You have to see every day as a new day and every challenge as a new challenge. Please join me in welcoming the Toastmaster of today's meeting, an engineer at Bosch, a senior engineer, none other than Toastmaster Abai Kotari. salesperson saw a lamp which was very rusty and old lying on the street and in some joke he just picked up the lamp and started to rub it like it was Aladdin's lamp. But lo and behold, guess what happened? Exactly, see you know this story, a genie appeared and he said, I will grant each one of you a wish. So the salesperson immediately said, I am tired of making all these sales calls. Take me to Andaman and Nicobar and let me have a nice vacation with unlimited supply of cool drinks. Poof! Then came the administrator. He said, you are tired of dealing with all these people. Take me to the Himalayas and I want to have a nice soothing cup of coffee with the view of the Himalayas. Poof! He was also there. And when the manager's turn came, he said, I want these two back before lunch. <laughs> Good evening, Toastmasters. Yes. Good evening. And thank you, President, for such a lovely welcome. I hope you are all doing well. Now, when it comes to the theme, I have a bit of a different story that uh, came to my mind. Now, I want to ask you another question. How many of you know the story of the honest woodcutter? The honest woodcutter, the person whose axe goes inside the well. Yeah. Okay, let, let me give you a quick recap. So, there's a woodcutter and uh, he's cutting wood in the forest and he feels really thirsty. So he goes to a well which is near the forest and by some chance his axe drops in. And uh, now he's wondering what to do, he's praying to God. So God appears and asks uh, him, what do you want? He said, my axe has fallen down, it's my only way of livelihood. So the God goes in and brings up an axe of gold. He said, ask, is this your axe? He said, no sir. And then he goes, brings up another axe which is more valuable. Is this your axe? He said, no sir. And finally he brings up his you know, his rusty old and trusty old axe. And he says, is this your axe? He says, yes sir. And the God is very happy with his honesty, gives him all the three axes. And that's where the story. But now you know there is a second part to the story. Now, the happy and prosperous woodcutter has now built a house, he's married and he's quite good. So one day what happens is, his wife says, I want to come and watch you walk. The woodcutter pleases her, pleads her. Please don't come with me, it's very hot in the forest, it's very dangerous. Why do you want to come with me? And, but then the lady you know, says, yes, I want to come, so the woodcutter has no choice. So he takes her along 
and there is a pot of water because it will be very thirsty. But what happens is by midday the you know the water is closed and now his wife is feeling very thirsty. So she tells him, I'm feeling very thirsty, can you arrange for some water? So now the woodcutter has no choice. He goes back to the well. And look at this fellow's fate. He falls into the well. <laughs> okay? Now the wife is waiting, waiting, waiting. She approaches the well. She has heard of this story, so she approaches this well. <laughs> and uh, when she goes there, she sees her husband lying at the bottom, uh, unconscious, but he's still moving a little bit. So she prays to that God. And uh, luckily that God also comes on that day. And she asks, what happened? He said, my husband fell down. So what he does is, he goes inside the well, and he brings out one person who is absolutely unlike her husband. Very tall, well built, and very handsome. He asks his wife, is this your husband? She says, yes, this is my husband. <laughs> now this God is furious. He said, your husband is such a uh, honest man, and uh, you are uh, saying, this is your husband? She said, sir, I know this story from the past. I know what you will do. You will go inside the well. You will get one person, second person who is more handsome, and then you'll get my husband. The moment I tell this person is my husband, you give me all three. So I can't take care of one, how will I take care of all three? So ladies and gentlemen, the past can be used as a rudder also. But, you know, sometimes things can be different. Uh, such also is a story of another person who lived almost who started the Toastmasters movement almost 100 years ago, or exactly 100 years ago in 1924. This person's name is Dr. Ralph C. Smedley. He was the founder of Toastmasters International in Santa Ana, California, in USA. And at the moment, as per the official website, uh, we have 270,000 plus members in 148 countries and 14,200 plus clubs. Now, uh, someone said last time that we have more than 3 lakh members. And another person said, yeah, this time they didn't renew. That's why we have now 2,70,000 members. So this way Toastmasters Club was started. And from the start of uh, the movement, the meeting has uh, been defined in a certain way. There is a certain format to the meeting. And there are three parts. So the first part is prepared speeches, where uh, members who have taken up an educational program will prepare according to certain guidelines. And then they will deliver a speech of their choice, which is also discussed and uh, you know reviewed by their mentor. So they have a mentorship program where members, new members especially get greatly benefited and I am also standing here because of my mentors. The second uh, section is called table topics or impromptu speaking where a table topics person will come and conduct the session. More on that later. And the last but final session is that of general evaluation. Now in Toastmasters we have a very unique concept of feedback. Every person from the sergeant at arms to the speakers and all the table topic, the table topic master and everyone who's you know playing a role in the meeting is evaluated. And this person who's keeping a you know a top level view is none other than Toastmaster Ratan Shetty. He's our general evaluator for the day. So I'm going to call on Toastmaster Ratan during the general evaluation session. And now it is time to go on to the first uh, segment of our meeting. So the first uh, speaker is going to be evaluated by Toastmaster Kamlesh. Sorry, not Toastmaster Kamlesh, but uh, Toastmaster Taran Menon. He's going to be evaluated by Taran, Toastmaster Taran Menon. So can I ask Toastmaster Taran to please read out the guidelines? So the speaker will be doing his icebreaker speech. Very first speech, and the purpose of this project is for the member to introduce themselves to the club and learn the basic structure of the public speech. Time off, please note the speech length is four to six minutes. I wish to speak out. Now, our first speaker is always high. Now, don't get me wrong, he's an adventure junkie, so he's always high on adventure. Now, if, if I were to uh, tell you more about him, he's a very smiling person, the moment you meet him, he gives out a nice bold smile. But I don't want to reveal too much because it's his icebreaker speech. And for his speech, title, lights, camera, action, lights, 
camera and action. Please welcome with a thunderous round of applause, Toastmaster Pradeep Padmanabha. Grand Junior. 
Now mountains, cycling, sea level covered, mountains covered, above sea level covered. What else? Any guesses? Under sea level. Below sea level. Now the camera dives into the deep blue oceans of the world, revealing the most beautiful aquatic colors you can imagine. Schools of fishes going around without a care in the world, and your fellow is diving along with them, becoming a certified paddy diver, open water certified paddy diver. This is what has been the way so far. But tell me, which self, which good uh, Hollywood, Hollywood movie doesn't have a romantic story to it? Let's get that one also. Good. So there's this girl, um, geeky looking girl, quietly reading her book. And uh, suddenly a fellow goes up, Da Vinci Code, sorry, that book is banned. And she says, huh, really? What did she not realize was, that was the hook. And she bought it, hook, line and sinker. She bought it hook, line and sinker and fed. About two decades later, she's still wondering what the heck happened. <laughs> You're wondering now, okay, all this is good and fine, but where did you make the money for all this? The fellow was working as a software engineer, then promoted, 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 and finally he lands into something for his passion. Twenty years later, he decides to hang up his boots and say, I'm going to find something new as an investment advisor, pass on my knowledge to others. And to gain that knowledge and to deliver the message, he comes to your Toastmasters. And ladies and gentlemen, so far what you've seen is just part one. See you soon. And the sequel of part two. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. by a team of three called the DAC team. Now I would want to call them on each to explain their role. As a timer, we have Toastmaster Chirant. So can you please come up and explain your role to the audience? Good evening Toastmasters and dear guests. Good evening. As a timer, it is my duty to time and record the entire meeting and its individual parts. So for today's spe speeches, like we have a time limit of five to seven minutes. For five minutes, I will hold up the green card and for uh, sixth minute, I will hold up the yellow card and seventh minute, I will hold up the red card and there will be a grace period of 30 seconds. Post that, I will the bell two times. The speaker continues after that, so he is considered as disqualified. And for today's meeting, we also have a speech called icebreaker. So for the icebreaker, there is a uh, time limit of four to six minutes and the fourth minute, I will hold up the green card and fifth minute, there will be an yellow card show. And at the sixth minute, the red card. Uh, there, there will also be a 30 seconds of grace period. And again, the ring will fly. So for uh, table topic, we have one to two minutes. First minute, I'll hold up the green card. And one minute, 30 second yellow card. And two minutes, uh, the red card. So for evaluators, like we have two to three minutes. So for the second minute, I'll hold up the green card. 2 minutes 30 seconds there will be a yellow card show and at the 3 minutes, 3rd minute I will show the red card and they also have a grace period of 30 seconds. Over to you. Thank you Toastmaster Chiran. As our counter we have Toastmaster Varun Shapiya. Can you please read out your book? Uh, good evening Toastmasters and dear guests. Good evening. Good evening. Um, as we set sail on our journey towards uh, smoother communication waters, we must uh, be prepared to, you know, we must be prepared to uh, navigate through uh, storms, navigate through storms that may arise in our uh, path. So as an art counter, I will carefully be listening to vocal forces, uh, crutch words such as ha, harm and you know, and I will keep track of everyone and report at the end of the meeting. 
be very easy to pick between two options of clothing, restaurants, Netflix shows, or even how you're going to spend the rest of your weekend. But my mind is always in two minds. Besides the choice disability, I also suffer from the last minute disability. You might get to the airport an hour before flight departs. I go two minutes before gate closes. You might get to a meeting 10 minutes before it starts. I arrive 10 seconds late, even at the cost of missing an opportunity. So deadlines are my nemesis and I leave the other person almost dead and in anxiety. Grappling with these situations often on a daily basis, I can't help but wonder where did my left brain disappear? I mean, shouldn't your own brain have the decency to be on your side? I finally understood my brain's problem. On the left side, nothing is right. And on the right side, overutilized, nothing is left. <laughs> my left brain kept going downwards and you won't believe it. I caused a thriving clothing label doing crores of business just because I could not make proper decisions. That's when I realized the significance of a balanced brain. Wondering what's going to happen next? Will I enjoy the fruits of creativity and spontaneity but struggle with logic and numbers? Will my right brain always dominate the left? Let me leave you all with a story. Once upon a time, an old man was talking to his grandson. He said, son, there are two wolves and they are always fighting. One is darkness and despair and the other is light and hope. The grandson thought about it for a minute and asked, Grandpa, which wolf wins? The grandfather smiled and said, the one you feed. My internal wolves represent the two sides of my brain and this year I am feeding my left wolf with an MBA in design and luxury in Italy as a commitment to the little girl who saw the world in shapes and colors. The design graduate who never felt more alive than when she created designs for the world's greatest luxury brands. And the first time entrepreneur who walked the runway with pride. As Rabindranath Tagore said, everything that belongs to us comes to us if we create the capacity to receive it. But will I make it? I'll keep you posted. Over to Mr. Toastmaster.
where I have first-hand evacuated story, sorry, evacuated story to share with you all a decade ago. There is a client in Vijayawada who is looking to furnish the upcoming office to the Vijayawada client with the collaboration of the top architect in India. During the final drawing presentations, so we shared all our superimposed drawings and the architect was impressed with that. Following the presentation, he shared his detailed drawings to us. There, I noticed a couple of issues in the drawing which leads to omission during the executions. Then I thought, why don't I tell this to them? And I pointed out this mistake. Then the architect was, who are you to say this? You are a small guy who is not even an architect? Then the situation became tough. Frankly speaking, that I was hesitated. There, since I worked with the same client for the Bangalore office project, they know the potential and urged the architect to cross check it. And the architect discussed with his team and then told, who is this guy who is not even an architect mentioning that we made a mistake? So who knows the areas of expertise better? Then the situation heated up, he started shouting in the conference room. The senior architect heard this from his cabin come to the conference room and then asked the architect what is the issue. He said, the small guy who is not even an architect mentioning that we made a mistake. Then the senior architect asked me what is the issue. I told, so these are the areas where the mistakes are there. If, if we are executing the same, it will create omission during the execution. The architect was reviewing the drawing over 10 to 15 minutes. What if they went ahead with the same drawing? It could lead to a major financial loss to the client and also the reputation to the architect's image. After reviewing, the senior architect told, yes, you are right, we made a mistake. The architect whom I was talking to was completely surprised. So here, I could have kept quiet what happens to me in case it is not mentioning that. I thought of telling myself, test my integrity and then tell somebody if something is wrong which comes in front of me. With this, the revised drawings have been shared to us and then it got approved and then with smoothly the execution of the project and the handover has happened. After six months, the senior architect when he came to Bangalore, he was called up and then asked me for can we meet. I said yes, why can't we meet? Then during that, he evacuated the scene and then potentially encouraged my courage and integrity to speak up in front of the big experienced guys. And then and he has offered us much more bigger projects till they, they are our customers. With this, I urge all of you, whenever you come across something you are feeling it is wrong, please take up, speak to them politely, point out that it is not that you are helping them, but also you feel good. With this, I quote the Martin, Jun Martin Luther King Jr. It's a time to make it right, the right over my. Thank you, Toastmaster Srinivas. And uh, just for your information, in the Toastmasters community as well, Integrity is one of our highest values. We have four values, respect, integrity, service and excellence. And in the order, integrity stands at the top. So really happy that you are one of our members who believes in that. So thank you so much.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will have a short break for five minutes before we move on to the next segment. If you want to use the washrooms, they are to this exit and to the right. So, thank you so much. We'll meet after five minutes. Okay, welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a nice break. Uh, it was comfortable. Okay, pardon me? You drank water, okay. Perfect. Now, I have uh, two questions for you. Now, during the speeches, were you hearing a no noise? Anyone, anyone? Do you know what that was? No, it was a rudder. <laughs> okay, second question. Now, you see three abbreviations on the board. Except for Toastmaster Lokesh, can anyone guess what it is? Random. Uh, right over my mind. Wow, that's a nice, lovely audience. Very observant. <laughs> We have a table topic session at 7.25, right? Now, if you want to conduct the table topic session even post midnight, you know, there is one Toastmaster who will be readily available. Why? Because this person is a nocturnal person. Yeah? And he believes that the past is like a GPS. If you keep looking into it, you will go and crash into a pole right now. So, don't look in the past too much. This person is an entrepreneur by profession. He is a wanderlust by nature who, who loves traveling and one of our past presidents with a thundering round of applause to conduct the table topic session. Let's welcome Toastmaster Shashank Bhatt. Now, 
If you can't convince your opponent, confuse them. If you can't convince your opponent, confuse them. Those masters will be This is the time of the year, this month, April, that is when we yearly raises in our, in our, in our companies are given up. And just about last week, uh, I met my manager and was told about my high percentage. But it was, uh, it was a single digit one. And we went back and forth, so I pointed out the current levels of inflation which is running. He acknowledged that, he acknowledged all that, but uh, somehow my raise happened to be only half of that. So now, coming back to your point about convincing and confusion, so convincing part was what my manager was trying. He had you know, all data and facts, how the IT industry has moved by this much and why it's a time of recession in this uh, in, in this land of US and where most of our business comes from and and here I uh, here I was you know trying to create that confusion. No, you know last year also you gave me the same data, same data <laughs> and the year before but the year before was COVID and there was no business and all that. So confusion and uh, and uh, convincing I think the convincing wins. So the mind is always more together.
friend introduced me to her friend. <laughs> I thought, okay, this is a wonderful opportunity. I anyway don't get an opportunity to meet any girls. So why don't I try hitting on her? So I went to another friend of mine and I was like, see, bro, I need to woo her. How can I do this? He was like, bro, go rent a body. So our first step, rent an expensive car. I did it. And then I took her on a ride. <laughs> and then it didn't work. She said, Vishal, you are such a good friend. So I did the second step that my friend suggested. I bought her her puppy. That puppy became a dog, but I still am her best friend. In the end, I thought enough is enough. I'll write a long letter, confess my feelings to her and make sure that she says yes. So I went over, middle of the night, sang her a wonderful song and in the end all I got was a slap. Over to you, Toastmaster. Give it all the time. God, dear God, 
I want to live till RCB wins the IPL. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy is still alive at 2014-18. So that is the kind of hope we have, that is the kind of perseverance that we have. And we still believe RCB is going to win at some point in time, may not be in our generations. <laughs> our generation. But definitely, hopefully, the next generation is going to see this. Let's not wait till 2491. Let's do something. <laughs>
there are times in my village if you go to someone's farm and go and have those mangoes by it's okay for some people but there are few people who are the rowdies <laughs> right and if you go in their farm they have all the gundas policemen everything <laughs> and you can be jailed for no reason reason being it's not because of mango tree passing <laughs> like a defense land it will be told that if you tree pass here and eat our mangoes some or other cases will be put on you and with, with that you can be jailed and i know there are few people who let peers kids to go and do tree passing but there are some devils who don't want others to eat their mangoes so with this i would like to have a two Next topic statement: Be the change you want to see. Be the change you want to see, Postmaster Jayshree. Hello, Postmasters and guests. Long back when I joined the University of Agriculture and Sciences, I realized that here was a person. facing 90 students and whenever i spoke i felt that i spoke with a certain thoroughness it was a dry subject when you teach structure when you teach grammar it becomes a little tough on the students to sit and listen to you and it was then that i i made up my mind that somehow i need needed to introduce humor so that when you teach something like the structure you have humor in it as well i remember the time when i asked one some of my students uh, to use idioms and then one of them was crocodile tears and this young man he said madam whenever i see a crocodile i take the stick and beat it and beat it and beat it until i see tears <laughs> dear those masters that was something that opened my eyes to what my students needed and i needed to be the change and i needed to tell them that this is not what an idiom means and therefore i worked at it and tried to make it as humorous as possible so that my students were able to understand and make a difference to how they spoke and how they looked at idioms as such Thank you very much, Mr. Sudeshri. Glad to hear from you after a long time. The next topic: Life happens, coffee helps. <laughs> Life happens, coffee helps. Postmaster Amrit Kaur. Coffee cannot solve the call. So go for coffee. 
funny sounding one or uh, something very strange for people these days uh, because we are all in this nuclear family and that's getting even more uh, uh, you know simpler as well as uh, single <laughs> to say the least but I think uh, people who have lived in joint families would definitely vouch for the strengths that it brings about and that is the reason why these days though we have so much of comfort we, we have everything on our tips a mobile phone can possibly give you everything that you want right from money to all you can order anything that you want you can get knowledge everything you have on your fingertips yet people go through so much of depression people have so much of anxiety in spite of having all that they wanted and previously during those old times we didn't get many of those things and those things were very scarce in spite of that we did not feel so anxious or people would not give their lives away just like that for small things or you know break relationships so I think when that support you have of the joint family that it gives you added strength and helps you confront life and live life to its fullest. So I would definitely vote for joint family. I think most of us who are experienced being in a joint family can relate to what Mr. Mr. Joe said. The next topic, there is always a tomorrow. There is always a tomorrow. I would ask our guest Harish to take this topic. There is always a tomorrow.
thank you for that introduction, Coach uh, Master Abhay. And in keeping with uh, that introduction, I'd like you to like to take you back to 2016, the year when the uh, movie by the name of Dear Zindagi that was made. How how many of you have watched that movie? A few people have. Okay. Now that movie is about a girl who's uh, a girl played by Arya Bhatt, the girl's name is Kaira. Kaira's gone through a turbulent life and she's gone through uh, bad relationships, heartbreak, as well as traumas in her childhood. And these have anchored her in her life. So what is actually needed at that stage in Kaira's life is a rudder that steers her boat, as one might call it, to the correct direction. And that rudder comes to her in the form of an unconventional therapist who <coughs> is Jahangir Khan, played by Shahrukh Khan. And Shahrukh Khan uh, helps Arya Kaira, the character Kaira, to put her life back, uh, the pieces back in place and uh, to steer her uh, boat, as we would call her life that, in a proper direction, by serving as the, by helping her uh, rudder, to steer her boat in the correct direction. So she ends up from being ensnared to being totally unshackled. And what is the most beautiful part of that movie? Love you, Zindagi. Heard that song? Yes. Love me, Zindagi. So that's about the Bollywood twist, my dear Toastmasters and guests. And now let's come back to our meeting for today. We'll start with the breakfast for our three champions for today the three speakers, that's in the form of evaluation. The first speech was given by Toastmaster Pradeep and uh, his speech was evaluated by Toastmaster Taran. Uh, Taran, if you can please share your feedback. Thank you, General Evaluator. And uh, hello Toastmasters and Toastmaster Pradeep in particular. Hello Toastmasters, many people take a lot of journeys but nobody has taken anything quite unlike our Toastmaster Pradeep. Because in today's speech, in these four to six minutes that it was allotted, he did not give one icebreaker, not two, but three icebreaker speeches. He was not, he just showed, shows us how he became a certified mountaineer, a cyclist and even a paddy driver, all in one. And we could tell that how he was comfortable with the audience by seeing how he uses smooth feet, if you want to agree, fellow Toastmasters. This is an exemplary presentation that he had given. And you could see the comfort within the audience that he had delivering his speech by using his body language and gestures. All of this were the true features of a maverick, Toastmaster Pradeep. But this maverick could have made more in my regard. Toastmaster Pradeep, I believe that you could have perhaps worked on your content clarity. In, in, in what I mean to say is that perhaps you started you started with your speech title Lights, Camera, Action and then you went toward talking about the meaning of today's word of the day and then Maverick. You could have perhaps connected that to your speech. Secondly, perhaps you could have even worked on your transitions. Again, uh, I, I still yet to figure out how your story about the films is related, the Mel Gibson film is related to your uh, own life. And this, I'm just nitpicking right here, and this might be my personal opinion, that what you spoke on was about you, about your hobbies, not I want to know more about Pradeep, right? And uh, this is my personal opinion is that you are not what you do, and maybe you can take this with a pinch of his sword. However, Toastmaster Pradeep, with lights, camera, action, you showed us with good, brilliant presentation, beautiful PPTs, and use of great body language, how one should do a great icebreaker speech. Or, and with the feedback given on working on your content, 
This will come naturally as you do more and more speeches. Hello Toastmasters, I've seen this maverick go on land. I've seen this maverick go below the oceans. And as he does more and more speeches, they're going to see him soar the skies. Over to you. Thank you Toastmaster Baron for that uh, upbeat and enthusiastic evaluation. What you also did is you gave the you used the CRC method where you commented, you recommended, and then you commented at the end, uh, and you ended the evaluation on a positive spot. You no, know. couple of suggestions from my side. Number one, you did state the objective of the speech at the beginning. When you are giving the feedback to the speaker, it's important that you see how the speaker has done with the whiskey evaluation, with the whiskey objective. That's one part I think you would have emphasized that it would have helped. The second part is that uh, the it would also help to give a summary, a very crisp summary at the end. Since you are an upcoming budding evaluator, uh, it's a good habit to give a summary at the end and give a little space, leave a little space at the end to give us summary as to what the speaker did well and what are the areas of improvement. These are a couple of suggestions from my side, but for a wow icebreaker speech with props, with visual aids, an amazing icebreaker speech as well as a peppy evaluation, what do we give Taran and Rani? Brilliant 
speech we had and a very nice uh, feedback uh, from Toastmaster Hibani for that speech. The only feedback from my side uh, to Toastmaster Himani is that it's an icebreaker speech. So there are times when the icebreaker speaker exceeds expectations. At the same time, the evaluator uh, would, uh, would uh, do well to comment and recommend based on whether the introduction has been adequately given in terms of the background as well as professional and personal details, as well as the structure of the speech. Those are the two aspects that can be very good. Other things, yes, to challenge oneself, one can use the stage, one can look at the other aspects of delivery. For an icebreaker, the basic uh, requisites need to be met. That's what we need to be emphasized. Having said that, a very comprehensive evaluation and uh, to repeat, uh, a brilliant speech by uh, Toastmaster Mansi. What do we give both of them? <laughs> we now move on to the third evaluation, uh, which was for Toastmaster Srinivas. Toastmaster Srinivas uh, was giving his speech, uh, the second speech, and uh, his evaluator is uh, was Toastmaster Kamlesh. I request Toastmaster Kamlesh to come up and give us his Thank you, Janaki Pradhanika. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Srinivas in particular. Good evening. Uh, secret of any good speech starts from uh, developing team with the support of example. And today you have uh, presented and attempted a good speech. What I like most uh, about your speech, Srinivas, uh, you connected uh, with the, your personal stories. And everyone in the audience can connect what you are talking about and connect with the, what is the values. Second thing that you, I like most uh, about your speech is that you are confident and well dressed. So that is a good part of your speech. So well done. Let me evaluate your speech based on the what is the project guideline. And it talks about the learn and present the basic method of it, uh, method of any write, any speech in the writing, right? So for any speech, uh, for a good uh, speech, it should contain three elements. First, you should have the opening. Second is the body. And third is conclusion. So let me evaluate that how you have done in these three areas. First, that uh, you have tried to captivate the audience by saying that have you ever felt wrong when you have done right thing in your life? And that is a good thing that I like the most. Now come to the body. You presented the two stories and you put yourself in the same character in two different situations. And, uh, and you brought it very well that uh, how the values are important in your life. And two values that you have talked about is integrity and the courage. And that has led to your opening of the door of your career. So that is a good thing that from your opening body, you have crafted the story in a way that it has connected to the audience very well. Now come to the conclusion, you ended the, uh, your speech by giving the quote of uh, Luke, Martin Luther Jr. and that is how you can uh, well present it. Now come to the how, what is that if I have to give the, any area of improvement for your next speech since you have presented your second speech. First thing that uh, you took the time 5 minutes 15 seconds. You have ample time for coming on the stage and presenting yourself. right? So you can add on the uh, crafting the stories in a way that take more than six and a half minutes, right? So that is one thing. Second thing that uh, in the conclusion, it was looking very flat, you know? Uh, it should have like uh, a call to action, you know, because you have a very good story, but I, what I felt that uh, you should have also presented the call to action. Uh, in call to action, like you can present that neighbor compromise on the values. Uh, always recall that what is the best thing that you have done for yourself, and that will give you the confidence. And that is the what we, uh, what is the area of improvement. Otherwise, to do great speech and we looking forward to have a more speech in the 
coming future. Thank you. Thank you, Postmaster Kamlesh. Uh, a very comprehensive evaluation once again. Uh, and what was good about this evaluation in particular was uh, that you uh, delineated the objectives of the speech. You again said what were the objectives of the speech and to a certain extent said how the speaker did deserve the objectives. The only area of improvement that I would like to suggest, just like I said, uh, I told the first evaluator, Postmaster Parallel, is that you know, try to pace it such that uh, the evaluation doesn't really border on 3 minutes 30 seconds, so that you can include a small summary in this thing, where you say that these were the points where you did well and these were the points that you can improve upon. But all the three evaluators used, having said that, all the three evaluators used the CRC method, all the three evaluators, and I personally believe that one should do that, uh, commended more than recommended. Also, considering the fact that uh, the speakers were either icebreaker speakers or uh, giving project two. So a lot of commendations which really uh, emphasizes the strong points and gives a lot of encouragement to the speakers to go on with that well. That's my personal opinion. I believe in that. Comprehensive evaluations, great speeches, what do we give all these speakers and all the evaluators? Fellow Toastmasters, uh, today we had four evaluations. So we had three speeches. The fourth evaluation would be for an evaluator. And before I would request uh, the fourth evaluator to hold on, uh, to give her some more time to uh, probably prepare her evaluation. And uh, I would call on the tag team now to present their report. As the timer we have Toastmaster uh, Chirat. Toastmaster Chirat uh, can come up and give your report. Good evening again, Toastmaster Sandhya. Yes. Good evening. How many of you feel like there has never been enough time in a day? Okay. So you have 24 hours in a day. So what else? Do you you are not alone, like uh, as you see, like scientifically there is a reason for it, it's called uh, time poverty. But it says that 60% of the people feel the same way. But I think due to Toastmasters, that has reduced, I think I could see like only 25 or 30 percent. Okay, so and why is that? It is because of poor time management. So Toastmasters help you to improve your time. So as a timer, and it's my duty, as a timer, uh, uh, timer of today's meeting is that to remind you of your duty to finish uh, your speech on time. And I am happy to announce that except two members like, who have taken the stage, all of them are within, uh, within their uh, stipulated time. The two members are uh, table topic uh, speakers, Nitesh who took uh, 58 seconds and uh, Toastmaster Joe Spall who took 142 seconds. Uh, that's it. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Tiran, uh, for that crisp report. I thought you were giving the speech uh, on the role of the timer again, but then that's your style. Uh, you know, perfect to okay with that. We move on to the R counter. Toastmaster Varun, you can come up and give us your report. Five, uh, five per anchors 
Toastmaster Joe's used more than five words. Toastmaster Sudeep to more than five times. And Toastmaster Desh more than five words. Thanks, Toastmaster Maru, once again for a crisp report. I now request the Toastmaster Shreya to share the Ramiran.
amended the speed, the evaluator for the first evaluation that uh, he is given on the team. And overall, a very motivational and empathetic uh, evaluation. The evaluator to the evaluator doesn't have any recommendations from my side. <laughs> so overall, I would say that uh, thank, uh, uh, big round of applause to all the four evaluators once again and before we move on to the next part of uh, my feedback.
Did the president have a story? Yes. He had a nicely prepared story about Tulsi Gauda, which resonated with the theme about not looking at the past and focusing on the future. Uh, what I like about the president's address through all these meetings is how well she articulates her uh, her uh, address, her text, whatever text she has, content she has. She articulates it very well. If I may suggest something uh, from my own perspective, in order to keep it a little crisp, I would suggest that you can keep it, a, I mean, try to not uh, be a little be verbose. There are times when the words get repeated. So that makes it a little verbose and winding. So if you can have the content written down and then, you know, though they say that you can speak from the heart, since you have this tendency to, uh, and I, I have noticed it probably one or two addresses before, where the words can get repeated or a little bit of something. So you can prepare the, uh, you know, what are the words, especially the words that you want to emphasize during your address. Uh, and uh, I think you realize that when you called on the postmaster of the day, you first took his name and then you know, the introduction came after that. Usually what we do is we build a little suspense. We say that so and so has done this, so and so is this. And who is it? The audience starts wondering and then you say, this is the postmaster of the day. So that, I believe that a little bit of suspense would have uh, really helped further. Uh, before I move on to the Toastmaster of the day, I'd like to share my feedback for the Table Topic Master. And uh, I'll try to keep it short and uh, crisp. Our table topic master for today, Toastmaster Shashank. And what I really liked about the way you conducted the meeting was uh, the table topic session was the way you first told the topic so that the speakers could think about the topic and then uh, come on stage. That's the best way to go about it. The second aspect was that you ensured that all the people who did not have the uh, role or a speech spoke, and also you called up one extra member, one guest. So that was like that. I am sure that that was well prepared, and there was a message in the group as well, which indicated that the preparation, uh, the toastmaster, the table topic master had done the preparation well. Moving on to the Toastmaster of the Day. Now the Toastmaster of the Day, the Toastmaster Abhay Kothari, uh, really had a sparkling, has a sparkling sense of humor. So the moment he comes on to the stage, you can expect a lot of uh, humor in terms of uh, some, some of it is situational, some of it is prepared. So that is very good, very nicely done on that aspect. You had introductions for everyone who came on stage. And you had prepared that. You ensured, I don't know that Usman Shabari is in the right now. So you have prepared that brilliantly. Uh, so kudos and compliments to you on that. So uh, with this, uh, I have only one suggestion for you. And that is, uh, that was in fact implemented by you when I mentioned to you at the break. So the good part is that you asked me for the suggestion and I gave it to you. You implemented it immediately. It was to lead the applause. So in the second half of the meeting, you could see that the Toastmaster today really led the applause, which is one of the important uh, jobs of a Toastmaster. And now, uh, I, I think we also handled the transitions brilliantly. 
to the toastmaster of the day toastmaster abhay let's give a big round of applause <laughs> along with that a big round of applause to our table topic master for today toastmaster shashank <laughs> Meanwhile, you vote. I just call on our president, Postmaster Priyanka. Thank you so much, Postmaster Priy, Postmaster Abhay, for thanking the entire meeting so lively and wonderful. Let's give a huge round of applause. I would like to thank all the role takers and speakers for taking part in today's meeting. and sharing the thoughts and enlightening us let's give them all a huge round of applause i have three announcements the first one is we have our speech craft that is commencing from next week that is 28th of april if i request all of you to please pass on the message and anyone is interested in joining us and being a part of this program you are almost welcome the second is we have our division b contest which is held on 27th april next saturday at oracle center manisha tech park i have shared the registration link as a group i request the members to please register and be there to support and cheer our members that is those distinguished those masters dalit anush representing our club and the area for the table topic and evaluation contest and those master varsha in the international speech contest and the third announcement and the last is a newsletter which we are planning to release very soon i request all of you to please share your articles and creatives by the end of the deadline so that it can all be collated in our newsletter and with this without taking further time it's time now to award the best role takers and speakers of today's meeting the best of the role takers of today's meeting is none other than 
of the Romanian Toastmasters Fair.